Good morning. This is Victoria Beal with the Ohio LTAP Center, and we are so pleased to be able to present for you this morning a webinar. Um, our pr actual presenter is Mike McNeil, who's a safety engineer here at the Ohio Department of Transportation, and he is going to be covering the GIS crash analysis tool, lovingly referred to here within the department as GCAT, and how you can use that in your daily work to mine for data and understand where your crashes are occurring. So you can hopefully then look at different countermeasures that can be implemented to help drive those numbers down and hopefully get us to our goal of zero deaths, which is where we wanna be on the roadways. So a couple of housekeeping items before I turn things over to Mike. Um, we are using GoToWebinar and we will be providing certificates after the webinar is completed for those who are on the entire time. So please watch for that in your email within the next week. Also, we are attempting to record the webinar. If we're successful, we'll send a link out to the recording to everyone. But if we're not successful, at least you're here and are able to participate live. Since you are participating live, we do quite encourage you to submit any questions you have. Um, as you put those in the question area of the GoToWebinar um, dialog box, I will make certain to read those off um, so that way we can also um, have Mike respond to them and you know, be able to provide you an answer. And if it's something that we can't get you an answer to right away, we'll definitely follow up with everybody afterwards and get you a, a written response. So I believe that's all I have. And Mike, I know that you put a link in the chat box, so I'll just turn things over to you now and you can explain to everybody what that is and start your screen sharing and get things rolling. Okay, thanks, Victoria. Thanks. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, let's see. Can you see that uh, screen? Okay. Oh, absolutely. Page. Yep. Okay. Uh, so there, there is uh, one link that I provided uh, there in the chat pod, and that's um, just a link to the training document um, that I'm going to be uh, referencing. It's, it's just kind of like a one pager uh, to kind of just for you to keep as a reference. Uh, so after we go through examples here. Uh, on GCAT, you can kind of see the process flow of that. Um, and then this is kind of your reference guide to have that process flow um, when when you go and do uh, crash queries and stuff that you yourself. So um, I have the, yeah, you can just click the, the link for it there. If you can see the ODOT homepage here, um, I'm just gonna take you to the GCAT reference page and in the upper right search box, uh, when I just type GCAT, and then I select the very first link right here, it kind of just takes us to the GCAT reference page uh, that has just a little description about GCAT. And then down in these, in this document library down here, uh, the fourth document down is is the one I attached the link to, which is the GCAT training document uh, that you can see here. And so I just have some some links uh, that pertain to GCAT and and access and uh, management stuff for your login with the MyO.Access access management there. Um, but r really, the 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 key point um, of this document is this eight step process and that we'll be using to walk through examples and kind of show you how to get basically all the way from start to finish. Um, start being, I have an intersection or location I want to search crashes on all the way to um, you have the data for that location and you're looking at the numbers. So that's what that reference is. And then right underneath that GCAT training document is this uh, get GCAT access button. Uh, PDF. And so for all users on the call, if you if you already have a MyODOT account set up uh, for maybe another system through ODOT, um, you can just email myself directly and I can add you to the system. Um, and if you do not have a MyODOT account currently, then you would just follow this process right here. Um, and, and go into the MyO.Dot website and just making a quick login. It, it's only a couple steps. Um, so that's the procedure 
uh, to get to get access to GCAT. So I'm going to start back here at the home page and show you how to access the GCAT program. When you scroll down a little bit on the home page on the left hand side here is the TIMS Transportation Information Mapping System, which will bring you to the home page for that. And then in the bottom left corner where it says search crash data search, um, search crash data here. That's the button that uh, you would select and you'll actually get um, another screen that shows up here and it'll ask you for a login. And uh, that's where you'll enter your MyOdi username and, and password, uh, which will eventually which will bring you to this page then. Uh, but there is that that login page in between these two. Uh, so just this is uh, basically covering. So GCAT's kind of put into two portions. Uh, the the actual website, which you can see here, is the first portion, and this is solely made to search crash data in in specific areas that you're looking for. And then the second part of the program is downloading that data into the Excel file uh, where we can analyze uh, the data and, and really see what trends might be going on and things of that sort. So the website itself is really just two screens. This, this being the first screen, which is the crash data search. And we have these five tabs, as you can see here on the screen, these uh, blue toolbars. And then as you uh, select each one, they contain uh, drop downs within them. And you can envision this, this entire screen that you see right here as basically mirroring uh, the Ohio crash report. So we try and provide majority of the attributes that are on the crash report uh, to users to be able to search on. And so that's what we'll see. I'll go through each one of these tabs and kind of show you uh, different things uh, within them. So starting with the when occurred tab, uh, you can see year and month is shown here. And all of these are just set up so that you can just click them and unselect them. And so one of the uh, requirements when setting up a like a crash query is a year. And you can see the little asterisk here. A year is one that is is required just just so it kind of gives us a time frame the system a time frame of when when you're searching for crash data otherwise it would look at you know the 10 years that we have in there and if that is your goal to look at the 10 years then the recommendation would be to just go through and highlight all of them but typically um, we're, we're looking at three years of crash data five years of crash data to get uh, trends for locations so that, that's the first tab, the when occurred, again, year and month are listed on that. Uh, the second one is crash details. And this has our 19 different uh, crash types that we associate uh, a crash to, uh, as you can see there. And then the crash severities as well, ranging from the lowest injury, which is a PDO for property damage only, um, ranging up through possible injury, non-incapacitating, which is a minor injury, incapacitating, which is a serious injury, and then the fatal injury. Uh, moving on to the third tab is emphasis areas. So these are emphasis areas that we have set up with the department and we, we track these specific areas uh, quarterly through, throughout the year um, in conjunction with a lot of other uh, agencies, patrol and public safety uh, to kind of see how the trends are developing for these specific areas. Um, and these specific areas mainly because they, they do attribute to a lot of the fatals and serious injuries that occur on the roadways. Um, when we talk alcohol, speed related, seat belts, motorcycles, uh, things of that nature. So as you can see here, um, the alcohol, alcohol related, drug related, speed, 
um, pedestrian, bicycle, um, things of that nature. We have a the senior driver one, which is any would be any driver over the age of 65 just involved in the crash, and likewise for a younger driver as well. And so even though we have all these as options that you can select, uh, you can just note that if, if you don't select anything, you'll just get all the crash data. And a, a lot of times when I'm running a crash data for a specific intersection, I, I really just pretty much enter my years and, and then go from there uh, because I, I like to get all the data that has occurred there from the crashes and then kind of go through the data and see what, what, what trends might stick out. But we do have a lot of users that only look at specific things in crash data and that's their only concern. So um, if a patrol agency came on here and wanted to just look at alcohol related crashes, then they could just select the alcohol button there. And uh, then any, any crashes that come through the download will all have that alcohol related aspect to them. So that kind of gives you uh, some background on those emphasis areas. The fourth tab is the driver vehicle. And this gets more into like the um, more of the details within the crash uh, when we start to talk of like type of unit. So like what, what was the type of vehicle that was involved in the crash? Are we looking for something specific? You know, we, we want to run crashes that involved um, maybe only buses or or semi trailers, things like that. Um, special function kind of goes hand in hand with type of unit. It's just kind of a um, a portray off that as as far as getting a little bit more specific as far as the 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 type of vehicle. Uh, traffic control type is the next one. And all of these drop downs, the these five listed here from type of unit down to sequence of events. And it, these drop downs, all the attributes within them are pulled directly from the OH1 crash reports. So it's a, it's a, all five of these categories are just mirror image of items that are on the crash report. Uh, contributing circumstances. And so contributing circumstances and, and sequence of events, these last two, uh, they're, they're fairly long lists on the report. Uh, I think sequence of events has like 52 codes and, and then all those are listed in here. Um, if we wanted to see all crashes that involved um, cars striking the median cable barrier on the interstates and freeways, um, then that's like something that I could select there. So that, get, that does get down in more into the details of the crash. Um, typically, they, most users probably aren't getting that that down into the into the weeds of it, but um, just presenting the, all of this information to you so you, you know that it's out there as an option. And then the last tab is the location tab. And within this drop down, there we have the different types of crash location. Again, these are pulled straight from the uh, crash report form. Um, on and off ramp, um, certain types of intersections that you can see here. The next drop down is the 88 counties for Ohio. And the next one is this ODPS uh, city village township uh, drop down right here. And we're in the process of actually revising this this field where we're, we're breaking it out. Um, with with the ODPS city village township. So in the probably in the next month or so, you'll probably see uh, two two categories listed there and it and it just kind of um, clears things up better. Um, so for example, I'm going to type um, Columbus here into the into the search box and you can see here, here it's labeled as it has a Delaware County code underneath it but Columbus proper actually is mainly Franklin County but it does stretch 
into uh, parts of Delaware County. So the way that we're clearing this up is it'll just make it a lot easier for uh, users to, to uh, differentiate between the, the city, village, and township. So that's in the in the works. And then this last uh, feature is this NLF ID search, which is stands for Network line, Linear Feature Identifier. And basically, this is a way that it instead of going to the map and drawing a, a shape, a circle around an intersection, or uh, maybe drawing a, a long rectangle around a stretch of road that might span two or three miles that you want to run crashes for, you can just come directly to this search and we can search search by county. So I'll just pick a county. Once I select that county, it narrows anything, any roads we have on our roadway inventory at ODOT specific to that county are then shown in the drop down here. So specifically for Belmont, these are the different types of county, municipal, township roads, interstates, state routes, and US routes. So if I wanted to run crashes on Interstate 70 in Belmont County, um, from log point A to log point B, I can enter that right here. And I can show you later in this webinar how we can pull these log points. And if and if anyone is, if, if we're cutting short on time and then anyone is uh, interested in that, then um, we can we can chat afterwards about it too. But you can see how the minimum, it gives you the minimum values and max values for the log points that we have in our system for Interstate 70 here. So if I wanted to run like a three mile section that, and, and I wanted to run it from those log points, um, then I could hit add section here. And then when I go to run the crashes, it's only gonna uh, run, run for that segment. So just a, an easier way to narrow it down. Um, the only key point with this is just really knowing those log points which can be obtained through the TIMS program here, but I'll try and catch it at the end. So that, that's pretty much it as far as the, the screen, screen one of the GCAT uh, website. Uh, again, the crash data search page here, we got our five, five items, and it's really just asking you to select what you want to search on uh, for the crash data before we move into the map view, and you can really uh, draw your shapes and narrow down your your results. So um, I have a couple examples set up here and we're just going to I'm just going to walk them walk through them and kind of explain things as I go and and, and show you uh, some items. So uh, the very first one, we're just going to start off super basic. And it's if we just wanted to obtain crash data for a specific county um, for for like a specific year. Um, so in this example, I just want to know what all the crashes are in at Adams Adams County for uh, 2016. Uh, so starting just from my blank screen here, I can come in the when occurred tab. I'll just select 2016. And then I'll jump down to my location tab and within the county there and select Adams County. And that that's pretty much all there is to it. If if you're just looking to get like total counts, then we can just um, download it straight from here. So we have these two buttons at the top. They're both at the top and the bottom here. And the first one says view and map. And that's for moving to screen two that will uh, show our crashes on the map. And the second option is just download. And the download button is basically saying, I don't need to go to the map to see where my crashes are. I just want to get the total counts. Uh, for example, if, if I just wanted to download these crashes in Adams County for 2016, I just want total numbers and I maybe want to see what, once I, then I can still put it in the charts and maybe see what, you know, the alcohol percentages are of those crashes and, um, maybe what type of crashes are highest in the county. If we just want raw numbers and not not really location based, uh, that's where this download button comes into play. So if I just were to hit that download button, Mike, when you 
get a second. I do have a question in the chat pod for you. Okay. It says to get crashes all. Let me start over again. To get all crashes involving bicyclists and pedestrians, do I need to select pedicycles and pedestrians crash type, and or bicycle, pedicycle, and pedestrian slash skater driver vehicle? Uh, f for the uh, pedestrian and, and bicycles, I, my recommendation would just be to just jump down here to emphasis areas and go ahead and just select the pedestrian and the bicycle buttons right there. So if I were to download this data set that you're looking at here, it would be all crashes in Adams County for 2016 that involved pedestrians and bicycles. So to answer your question, you could go about it. Th that This is the easiest way, just to select pedestrian and bicycle right here. Sounds uh, good. There's no other questions right now, so thanks. Okay. Um, th that, the que that question from the user was whether to select it from the emphasis areas, which I just showed you, or whether to come in here to type of unit and select the bicycle had a cyclist. It should actually give you the same results either way. Um, it, it because the the emphasis areas field is pulling from those unit fields, so you you could run it either way. Um, just jumping back to this download button. So if I just wanted to know Adams County crashes in 2016, and I hit the download button. Uh, it gives me 595 results, and I could just directly download all the all the data for those crashes. And if I wanted to go to the view and map, it gives me 592. So you can see the difference there. There's only three crashes that are essentially missing between the two buttons. And the, the reasoning behind that is basically it's saying that there's three crashes in Adams County that we don't have location information for. So there's there's an actual crash report that's in the system, but we don't have the we don't have enough location information on that crash report form to be able to snap it to one of our roadways. So usually this very this number is very small as you can see, three crashes out of 595 where this where this happened, but just wanted to clarify that that's the difference between the the two numbers that when you go to view and map it's looking at the spatial aspect of the crash and when you just click on download it's just pulling data from the crash report even if there was no lat long or no location field filled in so as you can see here um, these are the 592 crashes in adams county And since I'm on this page here, a lot of the stuff that we use just functions right here from this top, then the top left corner, there's this blue toolbar. And starting with the one on the very far left, it says set visible layers. If I select that and then go down into boundaries and select county, then you can kind of visually see better the, the county limits and how those crashes uh, fit in there. Um, then you can, just for your representation purposes, you can see how the township and then city, village, and township, or cities and villages are labeled out in here as well. So it kind of gives you, it's kind of, this is where it's beneficial to have GCAT set up in, in within the TIMS program already. Um, because we, we've just kind of dovetailed off of a lot of this existing um, location uh, and boundary information that was already kind of set up in the program through these buttons right here. So that, that kind of just is a very brief uh, first example. And I just hit the back button there to take you take us from the map back to our crash query page. And again, those are just the two, those are the only two pages that you, that you really need to access when you're pulling crash data is just 
again, this crash data search in conjunction with the map if you need to go there, which majority of the time you will be going to the map. Um, that's kind of the that's kind of the focus of the program is to be able to hone down into a specific area and pull crashes for that specific location. So I'm just going to hit the clear button at the top, and that'll clear up, clear out any of the selections that I had made uh, within any of these tabs. And so I'm back to just the basic uh, home screen here with the five tabs. And this this next next example, I'm going to kind of select various things from each of the tabs to kind of show you how it all all builds together. And, and what that's going to be is I'm going to be looking at uh, motorcycle related crashes that were either just uh, fatal or serious injuries involved in, um, in both Stark and Summit County over just the last three years. So starting with that, I'm starting with the when occurred again. And I'm going to just... Uh, select my years 2016 to 2018 and that that'll pretty much be your first step anytime you first come to this crash data search page is, is just punching in those years then i'm going to come down to the crash details and crash severity tab within that and I'm going to select the inca incapacitating for serious injuries and the, the fatal tab for fatal injury. So you can see those two categories now. And then moving on to emphasis areas, I'm going to select motorcycle here. And then the very last item is within the location tab for county i'm going to select stark and summit and you can see how you you can enter multiple counties you can uh, delete them out if you want it's all hopefully you know user friendly to you with just uh, selecting things and unselecting them on the screen so kind of just to review the the query that I put together, um, we're looking at 2016 through 2018 for fatal and serious injuries that were motorcycle related uh, within Stark and Summit County. So I'll, I'll hit view and map. And it gives me 196 crashes. And then once it comes to the screen, it should zoom into the area uh, that you're focusing on. And while that's loading, I'm just going to pull up these, I'm just going to put those boundaries back on so you can see how the crashes fit within them. But what you'll see here is um, crashes within Summit and Stark County. And you can see the purple and red. And so again, over here on the left hand side of my screen where I I'm under the layers and I selected the county boundary. If I go one tab over to where it says legend right here, uh, you can see how it gives me the, the legend for the different crash types, crash severities, I should say. So anytime you see a red circle on the map, that's representing a fatal injury. And anytime you see the purple, that's representing the serious injury which is what we searched on. So there's there's where the legend is housed. Um, if you're looking for any references to those. Again, that's layers in one tab over is this legend. Um, so if I just zoom in to say one of these crashes, and I just want to look at the actual crash report for say this this motorcycle crash that happened on 62, I'm just going to come back up to the top left corner, this blue toolbar, and I'm going to go 
uh, to the third one in, it looks like a little eye with a circle. It says identify features. And I'm just going to go ahead and click on that crash then. And then in this drop down, it's if underneath county is crash details, so we'll select that. And so you can see there I've selected this one crash. And over here on the left hand side, it gives me the details that we have uh, for as far as the crash data for this crash. So we can see like the county, the route, um, the lat long associated with the crash. And then just, you know, a lot of other attributes in this field here. Um, if the up at the top here is the crash report link. And if I click that, it'll pull up the, the PDF that we have for this. crash report. Just giving that a second real quick. Usually they they pop right up, but it seems to be taking a second. But that's where the crash report link is. Um, if you're just looking to, you know, view view a quick report or maybe view just one or two reports you know like if a crash happened at a location in the past couple of days and you want to maybe see just see like a or or you know one that you've been following or or that sort of thing waiting for it to if, if you just are actually just looking at the actual report itself um, this is a just a quick tool the identify features to just be able to go and just select that Let's try another one here. Okay, I don't think it's cooperating too well, but there you go. There's where the crash report link is. I've got some more okay. questions for you here, Mike. Yep. All right. Is the crash data only on state and interstate highways, or does it include any county township roads? Uh, yes, that's a good question. The all the crash data that we have in GCAT is for all all public roads in Ohio. So so we do contain the crash data for um, both both the state maintained system, which is our interstates, state routes and US routes, as well as county roads, township roads, uh, municipal streets, that sort of thing. And ju just to kind of give you a, a quick detail, when I'm looking at this motorcycle crash right here on this Beach Street, if I look over here to the left-hand side, um, where, where it says this NLF ID, just by looking at this string here, I can see that um, it occurred on a county road because it starts with a C in, in and it occurred in Stark County with this STA. And you can see the CR designation there for county road as well. And, and that would be county road 95 as we can see here in the string. So kind of looking at this string right here, it's labeled as Beach Street on the map, um, but it, within our system, we have it coded as county road 95, but we can see that that's uh, with a C right right there. And so th when when you get, if you're actually just looking to say maybe even run crash data for crashes only on county roads, you can actually download a, a data set for an entire county. And then once you get it into the Excel file, um, we can we can search on, we can filter on it. So you can just, so you're only looking at crashes on county roads as well. Great. I got two more questions for you. Um, yeah. the I'm going to give them both to you. The first one is, how current is the posted data? And then the second one is, please explain export data button on the bottom right. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, the, the first one starting with the data. I'll just jump back to the main screen here. So in the in this when occurred tab, you can see that we have about 10 years of data in there. 
Um, 2019 is current. I would say it's probably pretty good data up through about August or September. Um, it's, you know, okay, occasionally we get requests uh, for someone trying to run crash data and just, you know, like in say, they'd be looking to run crash data right now for stuff that happened in November and October of this year. And we usually don't, I guess, you, you, we can, we might have something in the system, but it's usually not a good comparison if you're trying to compare it with previous times or previous years, uh, just because that data is still, it's it, on a lag. And a lot of it depends on the reporting agency as well. Um, crash, ca crash reporting agencies, law enforcement agencies around the state have until March 31st of the next year to submit all their crash data for for a given year. So for 2019 here, for example, mo you know, most are on a continuous schedule where they do submit the crash data, uh, but we d ODPS does leave the window open until March 31st of 2020 where they can still submit uh, crash data for 19. So we consider data kind of fully locked down starting April 1 and on, and then it would probably be show up in GCAT um, in April then as far as locking the locking the system down. So 2018 and prior, um, even if if an agency walked into public safety today with, you know, 50 crash reports for 2018, um, they're not going to they're not going to go back and enter any of those in uh, for previous years. So those years are definitely locked down and 2019 is the, the current year, but usually there's a couple month lag to it. And then uh, the other question was about the export data and I'll just continue with this uh, example and and I'll show you that button okay All right, I'm just gonna uh, draw a shape around uh, a couple of these crashes just to kind of show you how that button works. Um, but typically what we'd be looking at crashes at like a sp specific intersection or stretch of road. But if I, the, on the, again, top toolbar, blue toolbar in the top left corner, on the far right side is a little roadway. That's actually like the GCAT button. So there's, how to get back to just the standard default uh, GCAT screen where we can select a select a shape there. And that's also where the cam tool is housed, that Excel file for part two. So if I just pick like a polygon here and I'm just going to draw it around these crashes just to download these three crashes. So I draw my shape around those and I'm going to hit search. And then once once I hit that search button, uh, then those crashes only within that shape is really what the system's looking at, and you'll be able to tell because those will turn like a teal color, as you can see here on the screen. And it and in the bottom very bottom left corner, it says you know showing one of three entries, so we know that there's three features found, which is three crashes. Um, so then you would come to the bottom right corner, which is that export data button. And just to kind of show you where I'm at in the process here, um, we're basically on step five of this procedure where it says exp export data to Excel. So as I, steps one through uh, five are pretty much the GCAT website and then steps six, seven, and eight are the Excel file. So we're pretty much on the last step of the website. Uh, just to kind of tie in that document that I was showing you at the beginning that this procedure is labeled out on there so that we got we select the export data button and then we select the first one there that says to Excel. It takes the data for those and then you actually hit that button one more time. It'll turn green and say download. And 
and then you select that and it basically gives you a CSV file then, um, a CSV Excel file with just the raw crash data for these three crashes. And it usually gives me a pop-up. I'm not sure what. I think there's something going on with the network right now, Mike, honestly. So I'm just glad the webinar is still working. Knock on wood. <laughs> yeah. I'm, uh, it's funny you mentioned that, Victoria, because I can't click on anything now. On oh, the, no. On like the map, on like the map screen. Oh. Uh, let's see here. See if I can pull up a new web browser. Well, while you're working through that, I do want to mention to everybody who's on the webinar that if you're interested in just learning how to use the TIMS system itself, which is where GCAT is housed, um, we do have a separate webinar this afternoon where um, Catherine will be going over how TIMS works and how you can utilize TIMS to in your work daily work. Um, so if you're interested in that, I'll make sure to email a link to the registration, which is still open. Are you ready, Mike? Yeah, I think this okay. one uh, seems to be All working. Right. Thanks. So uh, in this example, I'm just going to take us uh, th this is pretty much like the, the last example that I have here, and it's it's going to take us from start to finish, cover all eight steps on that uh, document for the procedure, and then it's it's really going to show you the the main point of GCAT, which is drawing the shapes. So I'll I'll do an example where, where I start off with a shape around an intersection, and then I'm going to carry it forward with a like drawing a like a polygon shape down the down the road a little bit to that as well. Um, to kind of show you with that. And then we will go through that export data process again, and hopefully we don't get uh, hung up this time. Uh, so just starting um, here on the, the main screen again, uh, cleared everything out. And so this one, I'm just gonna be uh, looking at a specific intersection uh, for just three years of crash data. Pretty straightforward. So I'll select 2016, 17, and 18. And then in the location tab, uh, I'm just going to select Madison County. Then I'll hit view and map. So even though I'm, I'm only focusing on one intersection, the, the way this, the system operates is you just have to run crashes for the county. And then once we go to the view and map page here, we're just going to we're going to zoom into that intersection but just on the forefront of the screen here um, i just leave it very basic and just select the years in the county so it gives me um, almost 3200 results and i'll go to view and map And, and while the crashes are loading, uh, you don't, you don't, you, I'm just going to go ahead and start zooming in because just because I know where the intersection's at, um, you don't have to wait for the crashes to load to be able to maneuver the, the system. You can just start um, zooming in here. So just to kind of show you what I did there, um, the crashes are showing up for, again, Madison County for three years. 2016 to 18. Um, this is the area of focus, the intersection that I want to run. So I'm just, just zooming into that. And it's US 42, State Route 29. And we could see the intersection there. And so when you first come to the view and map page, the left hand side of your screen will look like this. This is just the default uh, GCAT screen where you can select point or circle and then line or polygon. Um, it just It's pretty much more of a preference thing. You can envision point and circle as the same, and then line and polygon are the same. And I'll, I'll show you, I guess, how to use each one of them. A lot of times I just leave it on the point as the default. 
uh, for uh, for the 250 foot buffer around the intersection. And when I select draw, just click at the intersection, it puts a circle around it. And then I can hit search here and it'll run the crashes for that. If you wanted to make uh, a shape to your own size, you could go to the second one that says circle. Same thing, you can click draw and then you can make that one however big you want. So I'm um, so I'll just leave it at leave it with the point at the 250. And then I'll hit search. So it says 23 features found. So within within this area here, 250 foot is kind of the national standard for running um, a buffer around an intersection, pretty much saying that it's going to catch everything right at the intersection and even um, s some distance away from the intersection that could relate to uh, rear ends due to signals or stop signs. And, but anything outside of the 250 starts to relate to other other items uh, like fixed object crashes or maybe potential driveways down the road, things that might not necessarily be related to the intersection. So that's kind of why that set is the default. Uh, so we can see our 23 crashes there. And just to kind of, before I export the data, just to kind of keep moving forward with the example here, say I also wanted to include the stretch of road here down to this Snyder Lane. Then I could come down and back in the drop down here to Polygon. And when I hit draw for this, anytime I left click on the map, it'll drop a point. Yeah, it doesn't need to be perfect. It, and and shape, shapes can overlap as well. Um, if there's a crash that were to occur in both of the shapes that I drew here, once we download the data set, um, it'll remove duplicates and only show up one time. So here you can see now we're both running both the intersection and the stretch of road. So I need to hit search again to, up, to update it from just the intersection to also include uh, this roadway segment. And so it went from 23 up to 30. So if I wanted to look at these 30 crashes, then I'm going to hit export data button in the bottom right corner and hit and click the to Excel button. And then we'll select the download button, which is the same same export button. And this is where we were getting hung up on the system here, Victoria. So we'll see how it plays out. Yeah, sometimes there's yeah. just network issues here, so. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be. Let me see if I can pull up uh, just an existing cam tool to. Sure. I'm certain you have tons of those. And while Mike's doing that, I'll mention as well that um, we have looked at dates for next year for GCAT training, um, not only webinars, but also in person. So Mike does teach an in-person GCAT course. If you're interested in coming in and, and doing hands-on for a few hours, um, it's a great opportunity to work with Mike one-on-one -on -one and really get your questions answered um, as long as you're willing to invest the time to do that. So I would encourage you, we should be sending the registration information out here for at least the sessions during the first half of 2020 in the next few weeks. So keep an eye out for that and look at signing up for one of those sessions. We do move them around the state, so you don't have to drive here to Columbus for all of them. I see you've got the cam tool pulled up now, Mike. Yep. Okay. Um, so kind of, yeah, just as Victoria's mentioned, those, the, the in-class trainings are three hours. They usually go from nine to noon and, and it, it covers some of the, the basic GCAS stuff, but then it, it also covers more of like the in-depth um, Excel analysis uh, with the CAM tool and stuff here. So it's just a little bit more in-depth than, than the one, one hour uh, brief webinar, but 
this still covers the entire process. Um, so basically, the, this is the the cam tool that would be it. It's the 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 button for it is in again this blue toolbar top left corner. It's not letting me click this roadway, but when you click the roadway right there icon, it, it the second one down says cam tool Excel, and then you can um, it'll pull up an Excel file here. So this one has data loaded into it, but I think step six on that procedure is to import the data set. So at, when we ex when we exported from GCAT, that was step five, and that'll give you a CSV file that you, I just saved in my desktop. It's just kind of the temporary file for the data. The next step in the process, which should be a, a step six, is importing that data into this Excel file. So you you would just click the analysis toolbox right here and you get this pop-up and then it's this yellow button that says uh, Tim's GCAT import um, and it's telling, telling you there's CSV file so when you when you click that and then select that file that CSV file that you exported um, it'll populate the crashes in here like this and each row represents a crash in here that occurred and then to get overall numbers for it, the last step in the process is once you import the data, the second tab at the top here is this analysis tab. And you just hit this second analyze data button. And so it, basically what it goes through is that crash data tab with all those attributes for the crashes and it populates them in, into these pivot tables which gives you all these all these on-demand charts then and so it's uh, really cool to be able to see the trends uh, without so we can see here there's you know 530 crashes in this data set and then of those 530 crashes we start to you know we can see crash severity um, day of week uh, the breakdown by year have they been increasing or decreasing throughout throughout the stretch of time um, over here on the right hand side it gives you year and then it gives you fatalities and serious injuries as well um, it gives us like type type of crash breakdown and so all these charts you can see 530 at the bottom of all of them so it takes that 530 and breaks down accordingly gives you both the whole number here and the percentage associated with that. Hey Mike, I'm not sure what everyone else is seeing, but I'm still seeing just the main page of the CAM tool with the actual crash report links to the left and all the other stuff on there. So I'm guessing that our uh, network is just freezing up on us. Okay, it's it's not showing you the, the charts. It's not. Okay. So I'm guessing that's what, maybe it's just my computer. I'm hoping it's just my computer. So, because I can't even get to the GoToWebinar box right now. It's probably just me. Keep going. Okay. Okay, yeah, when I click on audience view, it, it shows the chart, so I think we should be. Great, I'm glad to hear that. Okay, uh, so yeah, again, what you can see here on the screen is the, the chart breakdown, and it just goes through all these different categories of hour of day, type of crash, uh, road condition, weather condition, uh, light condition, location. So a lot of the aspects that you could have maybe even selected on at the beginning of GCAT contributing factors and, and things like that. So it's really nice to just get a breakdown uh, to be able to see trends and, and see trends in a in a um, pretty quick fashion. I mean, as far as you can pretty much log into GCAT, search your years, your county, just like I did, go to the map, uh, draw a circle around it, export the crashes and, and have them on these charts like you can see here. Um, in definitely less than five minutes. So our goal is to provide these tools so that 
you spend less time trying to get the data and more time having the data and uh, assessing it as to as what you need to for your duties and, and what you're uh, trying to look at and stuff. So um, that's pretty much the end process is, is getting to these charts and then you know, from these charts, maybe you see a trend that sticks out or something that you want to look into more, then you can jump back over to the crash data tab uh, where all the data exists and, and look at maybe you can look at any of those individual fields, click any of them to either um, filter on some specific ones or anything like that. It's pretty user friendly. Uh, from that aspect. On the far left side is the uh, crash report link for each of these. And so it should should uh, pull up. Basically, our crash report links uh, should work for anything 2011 up to current time. Uh, sometimes we get the question of, I'm looking to get a 2009 or 2010 crash report or to view it. Um, you'll still get the data here in the GCAT download. It, it just won't actually have a crash report link next to it. And those 2009 and 10, those years were just not, we didn't have the data redacted for a lot of personal information for those years. So um, those reports aren't available for viewing. But again, going back to 2011, that's a good eight years of data now where you can view reports. So most analysis looks at three to five years. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. I guess one other item that I want to mention as a good resource, I'll see if I can uh, get to it here. Is if any if it's it's on that GCAT summary uh, document, and it's I think the second or third link down at the very top under the the helpful links, and it says ODPS crash reports, and so that's that's another good tool to just have as a reference um, if you're looking for more timely crashes. Or, or more timely to find an actual crash report. Um, again, that is totally dependent on the agency. Uh, we have some law enforcement agencies that might not submit crashes for a couple months. And so it wouldn't be in the system then, and it wouldn't be in our system in GCAT either. Um, but like for City of Columbus, for example, they they upload a lot of their crashes actually like within a day. So if you, if you were to go to public safety's website, a lot of those reports are accessible uh, pretty much like the next day, sometimes even the day of. Um, so that data within GCAT might not show up for a week or two, but I just like to provide it as a reference there. If you're if you need to reference maybe a, a report and see what happened at a specific intersection or things like that, that that's the best uh, reference for. Um, timeliness of, of a crash report. Otherwise, the purpose of GCAT is, again, to look at data trends over over years and things like that and to be able to access all the crash data. So um, that's kind of the focus of the program. Yep. We've got about a minute left. So and I, I don't know if anyone has put any additional questions in the question box, but once I get out to the actual GoToWebinar app or web app, I'll be able to see um, if there were any other than the four questions that came in and I'll get those to Mike for a response. So Mike, I want to thank you for your time, not only today, but all year. You've really provided great opportunities for people to learn how to use GCAT and we sincerely appreciate that and we look forward to the educational opportunities you're going to be able to provide in the future too. Thank you for all you do to help drive down the numbers of serious injuries and fatalities that happen in Ohio. Thanks. Yeah, thanks everyone for uh, joining in and like I said, just my last, my last recommendation is just to print off that, that summary document or have it handy um, because that, that'll keep you along 
stepping along the process when you're uh, looking to perform your crash data searches and and things like that. And if you run into questions, uh, my contact info is at the bottom of that. Sounds good. All right, Thanks, we've got Victoria. 11 o'clock. Thanks. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up. Thank you, everyone, for attending, and hope you have a happy holiday season. Thanks.